I leave you now, my darling girl, no longer can I stay. My heart, like yours, is breaking. Together we'll prove strong. The road I take will show the world the suffering that goes on and on. How their sorrow touched us all in those final days. When it was time, she held the door and kissed his sallow face. The flame he lit while even is still burning strong. By the light it's plain to see the suffering that went on and on. How their sorrow touched us all in those final days. When it was time, she held the door and kissed his sallow face. The flame he lit while leaving is still burning strong. By the light, it's plain to see the suffering that went on and on. The time has come to part my love. I must go away. I leave you now, my sorrow girl, no longer can I stay. Our bow, it is eternal, and will bring you dreadful pain. But a bow, demands aren't recognized. Don't call me back again. Oh no. The time has come to part my love. I must go away. I leave you now. My darling girl, no longer can I stay. Okay, good stuff, Mimba. Uh, now we're going to have our keynote address. I can't tell you how proud I am and humbled to introduce a true hero and patriot, Pat Sheehan, who suffered along with the 10 men we're honoring today in the H blocks of Long Kesh. He was on hunger strike for 53 days until the hunger strike was called off. He was on the blanket for more than three years. But it would probably be better if Pat told you the story than me. <laughs> So here he is, Pat Sheehan, MLA Stormer. First of all, it's a great honor for me to have been invited to come and speak here today. Um, and I want to thank the organizers for giving my, me that invitation. And I arrive here at a very positive time of change in Irish politics. It has already been mentioned that there were historic elections over the past few days in the north of Ireland in which Sinn Féin emerged as the largest party in local government. They didn't only emerge as the biggest party, they actually secured a record number of seats that has never been achieved by any party previously. And that builds on the results of the Assembly elections in May last year when Sinn Féin also emerged as the single largest party. And what's also significant about this most recent election is that the combined nationalist vote in the north of Ireland for the first time is larger than the combined unionist vote. And it's, it's often said that 
There's nothing as powerful as an idea whose time has come. And the time has now come for a new, united, independent Ireland based on the qualities that we all aspire to of equality, of fairness, of social justice, a new nation based on rights and protections for everyone that discriminates against no one. And that's what we are going to achieve. We're going to have a referendum within the next 10 years and we need support from Irish America to win that referendum and to bring about that new Ireland that we all want to see and which the 10 men who sacrificed their lives in the H-blocks in 91 died for. So to move on, I think it's important that I give you some context, some historical context to the hunger strike. And over a hundred years ago, Ireland was partitioned. We had the civil war and the creation of two conservative states on the island of Ireland. Hopes of a, a, a free and socially just Irish Republic were dashed. But there would be another day. And despite the oppressive nature of the northern state, the state had been established on a gerrymandered sectarian head count, which was aimed at giving unionism a perpetual and permanent majority in the north of Ireland. And not just that, overlaid on top of that were injustices of discrimination and institutionalized sectarianism. And when people came out in the 1960s to protest for their civil rights, they were physically and violently attacked by the state. And so their human rights were also abused. And that was the situation that I, as a young lad, was growing up in. And many people at that stage, in the late 60s and early 1970s, came to the conclusion that the only way to bring about change in Ireland was through armed struggle. We didn't believe there was an alternative. And the man who died in the 19, in 1981 hunger strike were exemplars of that generation. And it's important to ask, what was the hunger strike about? And it was about the British attempting to defeat not just the struggle that was ongoing right through the 1970s and 80s. It was about criminalizing 800 years of struggle against British colonialism. And what the British sought to do was to isolate and marginalize the prisoners. They thought that prisoners were the soft underbelly of the struggle and that if they could criminalize the prisoners, get them to accept status as ordinary criminals, they would then be able to detach them from the communities in which uh, they came from, to isolate and marginalize, and then ultimately move in and defeat them. But what the British didn't understand, and what they hadn't factored in, was that we, as Irish Republican prisoners of war, drew our inspiration from generations before us who had resisted the oppression and British prisoners going back as, as far as the Fenians from Thomas Ashe and Terence McSweeney and moving on to the 1970s of Frank Stagg and Michael Cohen who died on hunger strike in British prisons. Resistance was part of our DNA and we weren't prepared to bend the knee and accept that we were criminals. And that was, uh, we lived in a very brutal regime. Beatings and brutality were the order of the day. And finally we decided in 1980 and 1981 that we would have hunger strikes. And some people have asked, given the seriousness and the gravity of a, of a hunger strike, and the potential fatal and tragic outcome that might come about. Was there not an alternative to hunger striking? 
Yes, of course, there was an alternative. The British could have ended their vicious and vindictive criminalization policy, and the prison regime could have ended their, their brutal beatings and torture of naked and defenseless prisoners. But they weren't prepared to do that, and so we had to take a stand. And given the way the first hunger strike had ended, it was almost certain that someone was going to die in the second hunger strike. And Bobby Sands, as our commanding officer, decided that in the second hunger strike, that he would lead it out front on his own. Uh, and that was a measure of the man that Bobby Sands was. And of course, we know what happened uh, with Bobby, despite the fact that he had been elected as a member of the British Parliament and, and thereby completely blew out of the water Maggie Thatcher's assertion that the prisoners and the IRA had no support. Uh, on that day back in 1981 when Bobby Sands was elected, that was the biggest news story on this planet. And the hunger strike in my view is one of the pivotal moments of the last 50 or 60 years uh, of Irish history. And remember, the aim of the criminalization policy was to marginalize and isolate. But what happened was the exact opposite of what was intended. The sacrifice of the hunger strikers in Long Cash and the hate blocks inspired thousands of people to join our struggle. And after Bobby Sands first uh, 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 engaged in electoral politics, Sinn Féin then became involved and we went from strength to strength right through the 1980s and 1990s. And the British finally realized that if they wanted an end to armed conflict, they needed to negotiate a settlement with us. I ended up joining the hunger strike on the 10th of August 1981. I replaced Kieran Doherty, uh, who was a great friend and comrade. And I received a, a communication from the leadership. It was written on a couple of cigarette papers stuck together and wrapped in cling film and had been smuggled into the prison. And uh, I realized what it was uh, before I opened it, and my, my heart was in my mouth. Uh, and when I unwrapped it and opened the comm, I saw, first of all, it was addressed to volunteer Pat Sheehan. And it's not often because the IRA was a secret organization, it's not often you see volunteer in front of anyone's name. And it was only afterwards I thought, when you do see volunteer in front of someone's name, it's usually on a headstone or in an obituary column in the papers. But when I saw my name, I mean, I always almost stood up straight because I had always been extremely proud and still very proud of the fact that I was a volunteer in the Irish Republican Army and had taken up arms against the British occupation forces in our country. But the call went on to say, you have volunteered to go on hunger strike and have been selected to replace volunteer Kieran Doherty. By embarking on this course of action, you will be bringing our movement in the direct confrontation with the enemy. So if you have any second thoughts, Stand aside now, and nothing less will be thought of you. However, if you decide to go ahead with this, you will be dead within two months. And, you know, you think you have all the angles covered. You think you have thought through uh, what going on hunger strike is going to entail. But when you see it as stark and as blunt as that in front of you, in black and white, 
It definitely rocked me back on my heels. But after I gathered myself together, I wrote back to the leadership and said I was prepared to go ahead with this and that I wouldn't let anyone down. And I've never seen, I'm sure all the hunger strikers who died received a similar communication from the leadership. And I've never seen their replies, but I imagine uh, they were the same as mine uh, in their own words. So, many cultures and traditions around the world have a belief that as long as a person's name is spoken, they will never be dead. So, here today, at this beautiful setting, on a, on a lovely day, here in Providence, in Rhode Island, I want to loudly and proudly speak the names of Bobby Sands, Francis Hughes, Raymond McCreesh, Patsy O'Hara, Joe McDonald, Martin Hurson, Kevin Lynch, Kieran Doherty, Thomas McElwee, and Mickey Devine. They were, yes, they were volunteers uh, in a war against British occupation of our land, but they were also sons and brothers. Some of them were fathers. They were highly regarded uh, within their own communities. Some of them were members of the GAA. Some of them were Irish speakers. But they were also ordinary young men who resisted until their last breath. They were our hunger strikers, our heroes, and we will never forget them. And here, 42 years after their deaths, I'm proud to stand here and address you today, because they were the bravest of the brave. For fear Kroga aid a leg, and dram is Kroga our fad, a fur boss, our son Sircha Naharan. very much Pat that was wonderful another song now and uh, Bob Carlson and Sean Galooly are gonna sing it for us they are sometimes known as the Irish Ramblers and as that group they contributed a lot of help to this monument effort by playing at fundraisers for us very successful they're a well-followed band and I'm sure this is going to be a moving moment as they sing this song the name of this song is called A Song for Marcella. Marcella was the nickname of Bobby Sands' sister. I mentioned earlier that Bobby Sands was the commanding officer during the first hunger strike. Bobby Sands put himself forward to be on hunger strike and a new commanding officer was needed. His name was Big McFarlane. He was the commanding officer through all 10 deaths. What his psychological state must have, been li must have been like can't be imagined. But Bick survived and he wrote this song. Last September, myself and my wife Nancy were in Belfast. We had the good fortune to sit down and talk with him. He was very happy to hear about the Hunger Strike Monument that we were building. He is on a no travel list to the United States and he couldn't come over. He would have loved to. But this song he wrote in honor of the death of Bobby Sands on the 10th anniversary, so in 1991, he was still in prison. And he sent us a note with this, and it's hard to believe, but the song was recorded in the prison and smuggled out on a cassette, where it was then recorded and played throughout Ireland and then even further away. So this is quite a touching and moving song to Bobby Sands' sister. And, uh, Sean and Bob, I'm sure, will do it justice.
doesn't seem quite so long ago. Last time that I saw you, ain't it funny how the memories grow? Seem they always fold around you. Try to break you in a living hell, but they couldn't find a way. Thought your spirit wouldn't rise again, but you dared to prove them wrong. And in death you tore away the chains Let the world hear freedom song Yet the heartache and pain linger on They're still here, though it's so long since you've gone But we're stronger now You showed us how Freedom's fight can be won I wish there was an easy road to choose To bring the heartache to an end But easy roads are always sure to lose I've seen that time and time again You can stand by me like yesterday I'll find the strength to carry on Oh, let your spirit shine along the way For our day will surely come Yet the heartache and the pain linger on They're still here, though it's so long stronger now and you showed us how freedom's fight can be won freedom's fight stand as one